Wowza did take some time. We uh, got in touch with, with people in the industry, some of our customers, and we did what we're calling, and you can see it right there, a video streaming latency report. We talked to 391 broadcasters. Doesn't look like that many. It's a lot. <laughs> and we asked them a ton of questions. And so we got into some really interesting topics. Um, and, and we realized, first off, that so much of this is about interactivity. And you can see that we broke it down here. Live sports is certainly number one. I mean, who wants to be in their, <laughs> in their apartment or watching a game on broadcast? and they hear it, you know, hear people cheering down the hall who may have been watching it on a lower latency service. Or maybe you're watching it on Twitter and the people on broadcast are hearing it first. Nobody wants that, they want to hear it first. Esports, it's, I, I, I could easily segue on esports because this guy went to TwitchCon, this guy shouldn't have gone to TwitchCon, but I learned a lot, I will keep going. Um, video and audio chat, gambling. Gambling is really a fascinating part of the streaming business. A um, lot of it, if not all of it, is overseas. Auctioning. Um, interactive applications, OTT, you can see that there's some, some pretty as expected um, verticals for low latency and interactive use cases. But the one I'm driving toward is the gray bar on the bottom, which is other. This is where it gets kind of fun because you can kind of get in touch with some of these use cases. This is where people who are starting video companies or creating applications, they want that interactivity. Um, I'm working with a company right now that does live meditation, which is somewhat um, you know, of a unique use case, but, but they need that interactivity. Healthcare, I'm working with another case right now where, where um, a company is actually learning how to monitor premature babies that are in a clinic in, a non, you know, in, in areas of the world where there aren't doctors. They need that instant, you know, if the baby moves, they need to see it right now. Um, I won't go through every one of these. I thought weddings was interesting though. It's like, who needs low latency for weddings? Remember earlier when I was shaking it down, like, do you really need low latency for a wedding? I guess some people do. Um, surveillance, obviously drones. I sure hope we have low latency with drones, especially those who do it for EMS and surveillance and such, because you have got to know what you're doing there. So as you can see, there's just several kind of cool niche areas where you can apply low latency. What's the most important factor for low latency? First, they want high quality video. You can't sacrifice quality anymore for low latency. You can't say, well, it's really fast, but it's pixelated. Use, viewers don't appreciate high quality video. They simply expect it. Um, ability to scale, obviously. If you're scaling using a proprietary protocol, if you're using Wowza um, Streaming Engine, for example, and you're not using a CDN, you're gonna have to buy a whole lot of instances of software, which is very costly. That's a good way to go. Happy to sell you the software but it needs to be able to scale. Low end-to-end -end latency, we've covered that. Real-time interactivity. Um, how are they currently doing it today? Most people are doing it by cheating. I like to call it cheating, but I say that objectively, watching those quick one-second segments. That's how most people are doing it today. There's also real-time protocols. People are still using RTMP. People are still using RTSP, which is super fast. It's not chunk-based, it's just straight, good old-fashioned streaming. I talked to a guy today who Used to work for real networks. Anybody remember that? Download real player. Those same technologies are still alive. I'm kind of proud of that. Okay, and then you're, they're using, a pro, pro, there are proprietary solutions. Videon has a really cool one that uses Amazon S3. I've never had the time to actually check it out. Wowza has a proprietary, um, it uses web sockets. We can get video in the browser delivered very fast. There's a handful of them out there. And then there's other. Um, how do they plan to reduce it in the future? 12% <clears throat> of the people are still gonna do that short segment duration, which is a viable option. Um, people will still use their RTMP, good luck in 2020, use an RTMP. Um, maybe you can backdate the phone, the, 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 the date on your computer, I don't know, maybe there's a way to cheat it, but what I'm saying is RTMP is flash, it requires a flash plugin, and the major browser, browser platforms, particularly Chrome, are saying no more flash. HTTP, low latency which is essentially the low latency HLS, and that's something I haven't even mentioned until this very moment. Apple has taken and released a spec that can take that chunk, that 10 second chunk, and then break it down into little segments. And we're working on that. I, I think we're going to be one of the first people to get it marketed, or get it out to market on a streaming server. That's where you get, the, the player can actually get little tiny segments of a chunk. It's fascinating technology. It's very new. And I believe that's where this is all going to end up.
when that product matures, low latency HLS, we're going to all be using it. We ought to, because it, it's universal, plays on the devices, plays in the browser. We don't have to play it playing in the browser quite yet, but we're getting there. Um, and then there's also still going to be the very valid, very useful proprietary solutions. 